Shalom, Shalom, Yisrael. It's your brother Benaiah Ben Israel. And it's about to go down. Hallelujah. Or is it? Well, family, if you've been following the controversy over in Israel, you know that things are heating up. And for this video, we're just going to review a few of the things that's going on over in the land of Israel. And so hopefully, family, you had a good Shabbat. And let's get started. All right. Well, latest developments, we have the U.S. sending two aircraft carriers over to the Middle East to support Israel in their ground offensive in Gaza. And we also have Iran threatening Israel with a huge earthquake if it doesn't stop its attacks on Gaza. And then family, we have the Iraqi armed groups threatening to intervene against Israel's war on Gaza. And of course, you have the Israeli and Hamas hostilities continuing in Gaza. And also, family, we see an escalation with the war between Israel and Lebanon, both exchanging fire across the border. And of course, you have Turkey's Erdogan, which calls Israeli siege and bombing of Gaza a massacre. You see, family, as all these events begin to transpire over in the Middle East, you often find both the Israelis and also Christian pastors struggling to tie this in to prophecy. And what we're finding, family, is that they can't seem to tie this event to a single prophecy. Instead, we find them taking bits and pieces of prophecy and applying it to current events. However, family, we know there's a problem because Israel has multiple prophecies in the Bible. And whoever is identified as Israel according to the prophecy has to match all the prophecies. Now, we know the prophecies that has to do with Deuteronomy 28, right? The whole chapter of Deuteronomy 28. But we know there's prophecies concerning Israel throughout the Bible. And one of the main prophecies regarding Israel is the prophecy of being scattered to all the nations on the earth. You have to ask yourself, family, who has been scattered? What group has been scattered to all the nations of the earth? Has the current nation state of Israel been scattered to all the nations of the earth? Or has the so-called Negro been scattered to all the nations upon the earth? Well, let's take a look at some of the prophecies concerning the scattering. So let's start off with Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27, which reads, And Yahuwah shall scatter you among the nations. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether Yahuwah shall lead you. Ezekiel 36 verse 19 reads, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Joel 3 verse 2 reads, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Yisrael, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Luke 21 verse 24 reads, Now this is the words of the Messiah and it reads, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive or slavery into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So family, which people on the face of the earth has been led away into slavery or captive into all nations upon the earth? Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 10 reads, Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahuwah. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Joel 3 verse 7 reads, Behold, I will raise them out of the place whether you have sold them and return your recompense upon your own head. And as you can see, family, the promise of the Most High is to 
raised Yisrael out of the place where they were sold as slaves. Which people on the face of the earth currently live in the places which they were sold as slaves? Well, so in your mind, if you're thinking, well, the people that were sold as slaves, well, that would be the, the so-called Negroes and the so-called African-Americans. The folks that were sold into slavery are all around the world. And maybe you're wondering, well, has that happened to the present day nation state of Israel? And maybe you're wondering, well, did the Ashkenazi Jews get sold into slavery until all the nations of the earth? Or did the people of Palestine get sold into slavery until all the nations of the earth? Of whom both groups are claiming ownership of the lands of Israel. However, as we pointed out, there are a people that have been scattered into all the nations of the earth as slaves. Oddly enough, there are brothers and sisters of Israel living in the land of Israel. These are our brothers and sisters of Demona Israel. If you look at a map close to the center of the map near the bottom is where our brothers and sisters of Demona Israel are located today. And off to the left, you can see Gaza, which is where the current escalations and current events are as far as the war between Israel, Hamas, and her enemies. As you can see, our brothers and sisters of Demona are also located in Judea. And oddly enough, if you look at Gaza off to the right, you'll see a heart icon highlighted in green. This is the location of the city of Lakesh. Of course, the city of Lakesh was sacked by the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, roughly in 701 BC. And it is here that after the city was sacked, that King Sennacherib created a relief or stone monument depicting the people that lived in this area, which was close to Gaza and relatively close to our brothers and sisters of Demona Israel. And so, and with that in mind, family, let's take a look at how the people of Lachish, how the children of Judah were depicted in roughly 701 BC. And as you can see, family, the children of Judah were depicted as a Negroid people with short, nappy, woolly hair. And as we go back to our map, what you'll also notice is that right above the territory of Demona, not too far, is a city called Masada. Masada also contained artifacts of the tribe of Judah. And these artifacts contain a sample of hair. And the hair was in the form of locks, which is found in Negroid people. And so family, the thing to keep in mind is that the artifacts near Gaza, near Demona and in the land of Judea describe Israel as a Negroid people. And yet family, the nations that are warring over the land of Israel are not a Negroid people. And so if you're wondering, well, if the artifacts are showing Judah to be a Negroid people, then how can anyone who's not a Negro attempt to lay claim to the land of Israel? And for that, let's take a look at an article that came out in October 9th, 2023. And this article describes the DNA of what they would call ancient Israelites and the territory of Judah. And based off of the artifacts, the DNA will tell us exactly who these people are and where they came from. So let's take a look and it reads, and first, archaeologists extract DNA of ancient Israelites. A rare first temple period family burial opens the door to genetic studies on the true origin of the ancient Israelites and their links to modern Jewish populations. Now we note family that at the archaeological site of Lakesh, there were roughly 600 plus skulls that were found. And that in addition to the Lakesh relief, that analysis of these skulls also confirmed and resulted in an identification Egypto-Nubian people. And unfortunately, we don't have any DNA results associated with those 600 skulls. 
But according to this article, this was a different site in which they were able to extract DNA right around the time where depictions of Judah were as Negroes and the identifications of Judah's skulls were Egypto-Nubian. Let's keep reading to identify who these people are that are being identified as ancient Israelites. And the article goes on to tell us that the, that the tomb was discovered near a village of Abu Ghosh, which is right next to the biblical settlement of Kirat Urim, some 15 kilometers west of Jerusalem. And the results of the DNA extracted from this, these ancient samples reveals the true identity of these people that were found, of these ancient people found in the land, in the territory of Jerusalem. And it reads, the highlight of the very partial results is that the Y chromosome in the man belongs to the J2 haplogroup. And just so you know, family, the Y chromosome is passed from father to son all the way down the line. So this study identifies the root of where these people come from. And let's see where the J2 haplogroup comes from according to their studies. And it reads, a group of closely related DNA sequences that is believed to have originated in the Caucasus or Eastern Anatolia, a vast area including modern day Eastern Turkey, Northwestern Iran, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Southern Russia. Okay, you may have missed it family, but the J2 haplogroup the haplogroup associated with the Ashkenazi is believed to have originated in the Caucasus or Eastern Anatolia, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Southern Russia. And we can confirm this using other sources where we find J2 M67 located in the Caucasus mountains. And also family, and most importantly, when we take a look at the Bible Atlas, when we take a look at the Table of Nations, which identifies the locations of the original inhabitants from the very beginning. According to the Bible, we see that the territory of Azerbaijan, of Georgia, of the Caucasus was called Ashkenaz, was called Ashkenaz. So you see family, Haplogroup J, according to science research, originates in the Caucasus, it originates in the territory of Ashkenaz, and it also originates in the territory of the Khazars, based on their science. Based on their science, this is undisputed. With that being said, family, we have to look for a different prophecy for the people whose lineage traces to the territory of Ashkenaz. Genesis chapter 27 verse 38 reads, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thou live family which nation state which nation lives by the sword which nation has a great army which nation is gifted in war but let's continue family it says and shalt serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion in other words he's going to have the rule that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck and another prophecy involving Esau can be found in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5, which reads, Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. Family, who appointed the land of Israel into their possession? In 1948 let's keep reading it says with the joy of all their heart with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey as you can see family the prophecies are lining up the prophecies are helping to identify who the people are whose 
DNA traces back to the Caucasus Mountains, traces back to the land of the Khazars. And of course, and last but not least, family, we have the words found in the book of Revelations, which reads, Revelations chapter 2, verse 9 reads, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelations chapter 3, verse 9 reads, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. And it is here, family, that we have a complete match of all the prophecies concerning Esau. Remember, Esau would live by the sword. In other words, Esau's blessing was the sword or war. And then we also read that Esau would appoint the land of Israel into his own possession. And we know, family, that in 1948, that the land of Israel was appointed into the possession of the Israelis. And of course, family, we haven't read it, but we know that Esau has a perpetual hatred for his brother Jacob. So family, those who are attempting to match the prophecies of Israel with the Israeli will find a mismatch. However, those who attempt to match the prophecies of Esau with the Israelis will find a match in prophecy. Shalom.